Thank you. This is amazing. Um, I've never been to California, so the weather here is, 77 here is much different than 77 in Minnesota. So I appreciate the snow humidity thing. It's, it's amazing. No mosquitoes. It's great. So, um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, how to unbreak your site when it breaks. Um, because there are a lot of plugins available, and sometimes they're good, and sometimes they're not. So it's more going to be talking about troubleshooting, and it's all of the things that I learned when I jumped into WordPress. So um, let's get going. So these are the topics I'm going to talk about. So why would you want to use a plugin? Because you have some people telling you don't use plugins. You can do that, you know, with code in your functions file. You don't need all those plugins. But sometimes you do need a plugin. So. Um, and then choosing your party. Um, how many wizards do you really need in your party? Okay, because you need uh, you know some other roles going on there. Um, and then so that happened, um, or rolling a one. So how many in here actually play D and D? Okay, well lots of jokes. Sorry, it's all right. You'll, you, we'll get through this. Um, and then the next thing is keeping your party alive. So how do you keep those plugins working nicely in your site? Because things change. WordPress updates, plugins update. Sometimes authors don't update their plugins. Like, how do you handle that? And then the last thing is healing a party member. So when you have to make that decision, are you going to try to fix the plugin, or are you going to bail and find another solution? So like, when should you make that decision? Oh, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Chris Go Ninja, which is an interesting story. And if you find me at the after party, I can tell you why. That is my Twitter handle. So. Hi. Um, this is our room monitor. She'll tell you when, um, give you the 10 and the 5. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I don't, I'm also a Doctor Who fan. So there's my, he's my favorite doctor. We can, we can <laughs> fight about that at the after party too. Um, but so what now? You installed WordPress and you're, what now? WordPress is such a versatile platform. You can make a simple blogging site. You can make uh, a version of like an Airbnb for your community. I mean, it's so big. You can have a WooCommerce store. You can just do amazing things with WordPress. And the reason you can is because there's so many things you can plug and play. So, um, and plugins are everywhere. Okay, kind of like kobolds. And if you don't play D&D, you don't get that reference, and it's fine. <laughs> so some of you might recognize some of these icons. Um, the little mountain one is Contact Form 7. You should recognize WooCommerce. Um, there is the caching plugin there. That's, you should see that every time you pull up the WordPress.org repository. These are those recommended plugins. Most of these are. There's MailChimp, there's Yoast, and there's Jetpack, and there's 55,335 plugins in the repository as of last night. So that might have changed. So lots. When I first wrote this talk, it was um, 55,100 some. So it goes up quite quickly. So that's a lot of choices and a lot of things to wade through to decide what things to install and what things to put your effort into. So um, more isn't always better. Um, you have to be purposeful in your choices. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of plugins. You really shouldn't. Um, however, you probably don't need as many as you think you do. Uh, we took on a client and they were like, our site doesn't load, it's slow, we can't even update our pages, please help us. And when we logged in for the first time, <laughs> this is what I saw. So they hadn't updated WordPress core, they, they weren't updating that at all. Um, they still had a kismet on there, and they didn't like configure it at all. It's just sitting there. Um, they had some weird things going on with some file permissions. That's that ch mod error. Um, they have a wt total cache error, uh, and they had auto optimize on there, which is a caching speeding up type plugin. And they also had the U image optimizer, a lot of people use that one. They never deleted Hello Dolly. Sorry, sorry I got a little, I have a touch screen here, sorry. They had WP Super Cache installed but deactivated, so they probably tried it and it probably didn't make their site faster, probably because they didn't configure it. 
um, and then just, just all sorts of things. And they didn't go in and clean up at all. And so that's why their site was running slow and not doing what they wanted it to do. Now, this isn't very many plugins in my opinion. And you can argue with me that too. It's 28 of them. I have sites that run more than that and run perfectly fine. It just depends on what plugins you're using. If you have three caching plugins on and working, it's not helping. That's not better. Pick one and run with it. Okay, so. Any questions about this? Does this look familiar to anybody? I hope your site doesn't look like that. <laughs> I hope not. Well, there's an update every day, so. Practic yeah, I would agree with that, so. All right, so choosing your party, how many wizards do you really need? And I, I was determined I didn't have any gifts in my plugin in Chicago, and I was like, I'm doing gifts. So <laughs> here's my wizard gif. It's a very sneaky wizard. All right, now um, first I want to talk about the plugins that I use a lot, and that's just today. I might change my mind next month, okay? It happens. So when I first started using WordPress, I probably didn't use a fourth of these plugins because I was just learning and figuring out what worked for me. Okay, so I, we personally use Gravity Forms. That is not the only form plugin out there. It's not the only good plugin form out there. There's lots of them. There's uh, Ninja Forms and Contact Form 7 is a very solid one and it's free. I mean, you know, Gravity Forms is a, we pay for the premium. And we, we have our reasons, just like anyone else might have a reason for, you know, picking Ford over Dodge or whatever. So um, I, if you use Contact Form 7, just know that it doesn't hold any information in the database on its own. So if you don't get that email, you will have missed that contact. So please install Flamingo which is the same plugin author as Contact Form 7. And I would love to ask him why he named it Flamingo. I'm sure it's a good story. But he wrote both Contact Form 7 and Flamingo. So if you want to keep those in your database in the back end, Flamingo will do that for you. And you had long for Flamingo. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, Yoast, I mean, who doesn't use Yoast? I don't, I don't know. I love Yoast, even if you only use it for the Google snippets. It's amazing, it's right there on the page. You can change what Google will show in the snippet when you search. Or you can use it for writing content. I mean, you can, it's, it's really fun to explain to people with Yoast that when you type a keyword in, that doesn't mean Yoast goes and tells Google that's your keyword. Um, that's, that's a really fun discussion with people. But just in case you didn't know that, that's not what that keyword is for. It helps you write blog posts. Like if you want your keyword to be like banana, you put that in there and Yoast will analyze your content and say, hey, you didn't say the word banana enough. But it doesn't actually go tell Google anything in those keywords, okay. Um, page builders, pick your favorite. Everyone likes a different page builder. How many people in here have used Visual Composer? How many people like Visual Composer? Watch my hand. Okay, it doesn't mean I can't use it. And, I, and it, it's valid and it has its things, but it's just, it doesn't, work for me personally. That doesn't mean it's not a good plugin, okay? It's perfectly fine. Um, so I have the one that I use, and it's, I'm not gonna plug it, it's fine. There's more than one, Which that's is. all I'm saying. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Advanced custom fields, um, that I will sing praises to for the rest of my life. I love that plugin. I bought the Pro and I will never look back. And they are working on getting it to work with Gutenberg, so thank goodness. Um, CPT UI, that stands for custom post type user interface. So uh, you can quickly Google and figure out how to add a custom post type into WordPress. There's plenty of little snippets to get you there. But I like this because it's easier to use. I can go write my snippet 100 times or I can just install this thing and add taxonomies and custom post types all day long and tweak it and be like, oh, you know what? Maybe I don't want it to have a hierarchy. And I can go in and it's a drop down. And bam, my custom post type doesn't have a hierarchy anymore. So like, so I use that out of convenience. So that's just me. Uh, Search and Filter Pro, I, I accidentally stumbled upon, upon this plugin and I, we use a lot of custom post types, a lot of advanced custom fields, and this just allows me to run searches and queries and everything on all that extra stuff. And again, that's something that if you know how to code, you could probably go do it just fine. But I use this out of convenience. So there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. 
Um, user role editor, I use that a lot. Again, that's something that can be easily done in a snippet in a functions file, is change you know, capabilities of a user role. But this one I can just check boxes and go save. So it saves me time. Um, admin menu editor, this might not be, it depends if you wanna, we have clients, so we clean up their back end for them. They don't necessarily wanna see 30 options on the left. That can be kind of overwhelming to them. So we'll ask them, what do you want to do on your own? And we will tailor the back end to them. And so this is where you can hide certain menu items. Like if they're never going to be in your theme options, you can just kind of cosmetically hide it for them, for the editor role. It doesn't get rid of it, doesn't delete it, just kind of doesn't show it for them. And some clients, they like that because they just wanna know, here's the six things I do every day. And they don't want all the extra stuff. Um, white label CMS, again, this is for more for when we're helping clients. This, again, stuff you can do on your own in code, or this lets you change your logo for the login page. So instead of the WordPress W, you can put their customer logo there. And they, they find that so exciting when they log in for the first time. They're like, oh, that was our logo there. I'm like, yep, that's your website. You know, and you can add your little footer in there. You can say, you know, this was developed by so-and-so company, and it's in the footer on the back end, on the admin side, not the front-facing side. So that's a fun one to play with. That one's free. Um, Iris Color Picker, asterisk, because it's the one I wrote. Okay, um, I wrote my first plugin mainly because I wanted to learn how to do it. The plugin I wrote is not especially difficult or complex, um, and it's based on the Iris Color Picker, which some very smart people wrote Iris, Iris Color Picker. I have nothing to do with that. But in the Iris Color Picker code documentation, you can change the default color palette underneath the pretty circle of colors. And a lot of times when we work with clients, they have five or six solid colors they use all the time. And instead of having to type those hex codes any, every time, I just change those default swatches to their brand colors. So my page builder that I use is, uses Iris Color Picker. So that helps me out a ton. So I really wrote this plugin for me. And then I thought, well, I'll jump through the hoops to get it on the repository because I want to learn how to do that. This is my, you know, I want to know how to do that. So you don't have to go download that. But anyway, it's, it's something I could have done in the functions file in my child theme on all of my WordPress installs and it would have done the same thing, but I was determined I wanted to see how much hoops you have to jump through to make a plugin. So yeah. lots of hoops. I learned and you know here I, I'm only two and a half years into this WordPress world and um, I, I was teaching math. Okay, so I did take some computer science in college. I learned how to program in MATLAB. I learned how to program in Python, you know, all that good stuff. And so making the leap to HTML and, and PHP and JavaScript, I mean, I'm just learning as I go. So, and if you are, unfortunately guys, if you are a woman in this room, you really should go to Girl Develop It because that's where I learned how to write vanilla Java, JavaScript. Not a ton of people write vanilla JavaScript every day, but it was, it was helpful to me when I had to go investigate like jQuery errors or things like that if I knew what it was based in. So if you are interested in learning more coding stuff, Girl Develop It, it's all over the US. So we have some chapters in Minnesota that I go to a lot too. So just plug that talk for later. Um, WooCommerce, who doesn't know WooCommerce? Anybody? It's amazing. It's really resource intensive too, but it is amazing. So um, I use WP Mail Log a lot. Um, to make sure WordPress is mailing things out correctly. Because sometimes I get clients who call and say, every form from my website is going to my spam folder. And you're like, okay, well, what kind of email program do you use? And they're like, Hotmail. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, this is, this is more than just this. But you know, so mail log lets me see that yes, WordPress actually did mail that thing out and it went to so and so and it was sent at this time. So it's just another tool for me to troubleshoot mail issues, which that could be an entire our talk also, using SMTP and all of that stuff, so. Um, better search replace, we, the way we develop at Iceberg Web Design is we have, you know, a development URL. So it's wordcamp.icebergwebdesign.com, right? And then later on we have to go, when it goes live, change that to the actual URL of the website. And better search replace searches the SQL database and makes all sorts of changes for you. 
it takes a bit and it's dangerous because if you change something you shouldn't, you just messed with your SQL database. So maybe update or back up before you do that. But we do that a lot to, to bulk change a development URL to an actual URL. So that's just a tool we use. Um, regenerate thumbnails, has anyone used that plugin? I use that quite a bit. So um, if you are having issues with maybe photo loading speeds and you forgot to optimize your one giant hero image on your homepage, um, and you're like, shoot, I better do that. Well, if you in your theme have it set up to have different size thumbnails, those are already generated. If you go into your uploads folder, nine times out of 10, you see 10 versions of your big hero image and they're all in different sizes. They say like hero image one dot JPEG and then they say hero image one times 700 times 300 point, you know, all that kind of stuff. So if you change that main image and then you go regenerate thumbnails for that image, it will go and do that for you and fix that. So, um, Duplicate post. It's just a plugin. I, I, I think it's called duplicate post. It's the author's name is Enrico and it actually duplicates the post. <laughs> so I was so excited because we do use a page builder and it was difficult to find one that actually duplicated our page builder elements. So some duplicate post plugins only duplicate the actual WordPress content that's in the visual text box. So, um, and then maintenance. Who doesn't like a maintenance plugin? Anybody? Has anyone used a maintenance plugin? Really? Oh, they're the best. They just put a landing page up and you're like, you can't, we're not here yet, come back later. You know, and then when you log in, you still see all of your WordPress and all your pages and things like that. But in the front end, if you're cowboy coding like I do too much, <laughs> you've got a wall up so they can't see the construction going on behind it. Also, you can let the client come in. Yeah, you can let the client come in, but for if somebody stumbles across the website, they'll get a nice put together page. Um, and there are a ton of other plugins, okay, a ton. There's a ton of maintenance plugins, there's a ton of duplicate plugins. Um, these are not the only spells in the compendium, okay? And that's a D&D &D joke, so. <laughs> um, and so, but great, there's like 55,000 of them, how do you choose? And so I guarantee you I just split the room with this picture. What do you think? How many people iPhone X? How many people Samsung S9 Plus, Android? Nobody has a cell phone in here, all right, good. I, my phone broke and I walked into T-Mobile and I was faced with this decision, okay? Do I go Apple or do I stick with Android when I'm used to? And so when you're, I, I immediately in the middle of the T-Mobile store pulled up my phone, my old broken smartphone and started reading reviews. And that's what you need to do with plugins. Look it up, Google it, like Google duplicate post. Look through the, the support forum on the WordPress repository. Like there's a whole comment section. See if they're helpful. See if they never respond to anybody. Like that's good things to know. So first thing if when you're choosing on a plugin, look at the specs, okay? The iPhone 10 and the Samsung S9 Plus, they have similar specs. Again, we can argue about that over the after party. But um, look at the reviews, read, read, read. Most things have at least a handful of bad reviews. Let's be honest, there's always people out there that are looking for things to be wrong with everything. So you have to make the ground up decision of, is that negative review really, do you think that's something that's gonna impact you or not? Okay. I don't see any negative reviews, I think it's safe. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> trying to explain that to people too. You know, your 4.5 isn't gonna break your business, I promise. You know, they're like, you have to get rid of that four star review. It, it's okay, it's fine. And then your prior experience with the plugins. So like Gravity Forms, I'm super comfortable with it. So for me to make the leap to Ninja Forms or some other form plugin, it would take me some time. And since Gravity Forms does everything I need it to do, I'm, I'm just gonna stick with it. So I'm super comfortable with Android. So I walked out of the store with a Samsung S9. <laughs> Although I did joke to the guy, I'm like, this isn't gonna like blow up in my hand, is it? And he promised it wouldn't, so. And it hasn't yet. <laughs> so. All right, so that happened. Let's say you download a plugin that you think is gonna save your life and you activate it and things go wrong. So wrong. Does anyone know what movie that is? Yeah, there we go. It's Galaxy Quest is a funny movie making fun of Star Trek. 
it is the best. Um, so how many of you have ever seen this screen? This is a really common PHP error, and I'd be super impressed if somebody could tell me, I, I broke this on purpose, and does anyone know how I broke it? Ding, ding, ding. I have something before the PHP opening tag in the, in the PHP file. I do this all the time on accident because like a non-adult, I have seven tabs open of Sublime Text and 60 tabs open in my Chrome, and I think I'm typing over here, and I'm really typing over here, and then I just hit save, and I don't check. And then I get the screen. So I have to go in and fix it. So. How many of you have uh, FTP'd into your own site? Yay! The last time I did this talk, two people hand. How many of you have accessed their files through like the cPanel file manager type area? Perfect. Either one of those are going to work. Okay, so if you've never FTP'd in, don't be afraid of it. It's, it's just a folder of files. Okay, just by looking at it, you won't break your site. Now, if you go in and start deleting things, you're like, oh, that looks like bloat, don't need that. Yet, yeah, then you might, you know, have some issues. But, so there's some free FTP programs. FileZilla is free, CyberDuck is free. There's paid ones if you like those better. Or just go into your cPanel and go into your file manager. Every cPanel looks different. This is just what mine looks like. Okay. All right, so let's break some stuff. <laughs> All right, so this is my amazing WordPress site I made in five seconds. There's Minneapolis. You should come visit us sometime. Um, we have some mosquitoes. It's great. <laughs> um, I had installed, because we were talking about plugins, there's an amazing plugin called Faker Press that just populates a bunch of stuff. So I had it populate some things. It grabs images from Unsplash and just puts some fake posts in. Faker Press, F A K E R P R E S S, all one word. And it's, you know, it's just it's easier than going to lorem ipsum, copying, throw it in, it's quicker. You just like, make me 10 posts, and it does. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to log in here, and I'm going to break my site. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I break things on the regular. It's how I learn, which is a very good argument for why you should develop locally and not on your live site, even though I do. Oh. Yeah, it does. It really does depend on what it is. All right, so that, like I said, that admin menu editor would change, like, the left side menu to be whatever you would like. You can change names of stuff. So if you don't want it to be pages, you want it to be awesomest things ever, you could just change the title of that menu item. All right, so I have some plugins. I got rid of Hello Dolly. <laughs> Um, there's my custom swatches for Iris Color Picker. Ah, go install it. Just kidding. Um, and then there's Faker Press. And then we have Level 2 Categories, which is an eight year old plugin on the repository. It's still there. I think it's for WordPress 2. Point something or other. And then we have the best plugin ever, which is the one I wrote. <laughs> so we're going to try Level 2 Categories. This is a very old plugin, and it does, um, you know, the description is it allows you to create a relationship between user levels and categories. So only users with a defined level will be able to post on a chosen category. That sounds like a useful thing, right, if you have a lot of authors that are logging in to do stuff. Okay, but this plugin's eight years old. WordPress has changed a lot in eight years. So I'm going to activate this plugin. Oh, no. What the heck? If you see that, that's a bad thing. And if you don't want to troubleshoot that, maybe find a different plugin. If you want to dig in and you're like, I absolutely want to use this plugin, then you know, go ahead and dig into the code. But it is eight years old. I'm pretty sure the plugin author hasn't updated it. They're not going to want to help you. I, mean, I hate to tell you. <laughs> but you can dig in and you can try to fix it if you want. But all of those errors, not a great thing. Okay, so. I'm going to go deactivate it. It's OK. Deep breaths. <laughs> All right. And then now I'm going to activate the bestest plugin ever. Yes.
that they absolutely do. Um, the question was, what happens when you deactivate and delete it? Some plugins don't clean up after themselves. They leave a bunch of stuff in your SQL database. Um, the best thing you can do is attempt to find what, what row it was put in and go get it out of your database. Um, there's no magic bullet for that. Um, like WooCommerce will leave all of its table information even if you deactivate it and delete it. And I can understand why, because somebody might be super frustrated with WooCommerce, deactivate it, and then a week later go, oh, God, I'm gonna try it again. And then when they log in, at least all their products are still there, right? But if you know for sure, I'm never touching WooCommerce again, you can either you know, contact them and say, look, I just can you help me clean up my database? What am I looking for? What should I get rid of? And they will most likely help you. Um, littler plugins, you can reach out to the plugin author. So most of them have pretty self-explanatory like titles for the things that they added in. Um, and so you can go in and delete them there. If you're not comfortable working in a SQL database, maybe find someone who is, and they can help you clean that stuff up. There isn't any magic like cleanup database plugin that I've found. Where do you find the leftover code? Like how do you know where the leftover code is? Um, well, Word, well, WooCommerce, ha, you know, has Woo almost in everything. <laughs> so if you log into the, your SQL database and do a SQL query for WOO, you know, you can see where it comes up. I, I just trial and error and try and find everything in there and get it, rid of it that way. So. I wish I had a better answer for you. Yeah. yeah so at the risk of saying something really controversial, um, the reality is like a lot of this stuff is just in the SQL database. They're just records. Mm -hmm. They're just sit there. They're going to be benign. They're not going to, if the plugin's not active, it's not going to, shouldn't put a performance, in, most of the right. put a performance impact on your site. So most of the time, you probably don't have to worry about it all that much unless mm -hmm. you're just, you know, obsessed with compulsive and just want that stuff out of there. Right. Yeah, because if, if it's not actively using that query, it won't slow your site down. It just adds bloat to your database. So if you're trying to give a client their SQL dump to move somewhere else, it's going to be a really but big SQL. A mass, I mean, if you have yeah. a massive, massive WooCommerce database, then maybe it's a problem. But I mean, 10,000 rows, 20,000 rows in a SQL table isn't going to slow a site no. down. It's not going to be a problem. It probably won't. Could you so. s search the code for the uh, SQL blanks and, and find which ones are going to what, uh, for what products for that particular plugin? That probably be easy way to find out. Yeah, probably. You're right. Yeah, just search the uh, plugin itself. Yeah, search the plugin itself for where it's sticking stuff into the database if you're trying to figure out where it is. So um, the Iris plugin that I wrote, just it cleans up after itself. Um, all right, so the best plug of send ever is yelling at me. It says there's a parse error. I see those a lot too. And I did the same thing I did before. I have some things before the PHP tag. So WordPress is learning and it's amazing and sometimes it won't let you activate a plugin. There was a time when you could just activate everything all the time and they weren't like stopping you. So, and now if you've played in ever in the style sheet in the appearance editor. Has anyone actually went into their CSS file through the appearance editor? It won't let you put bad code in. It yells at you. It's like, no, you need a semicolon. What are you doing? Or, you know, I can't save that. You, you're missing a parenthesis. So that's kind of cool. That's new. I don't like it because it, it real time checks and I don't type fast enough. <laughs> it's not like yelling at me. I'm getting, getting there. I'm getting there. So getting there. All right, so um, let's say that I leave this level two category activated and I let's say I can't get into the back end at all. Right now I can and it probably shows on the front just fine. It's hiding, don't worry, that hero image is amazing. Um, but let's say you can't get into your site to deactivate it. You're just stuck with that white screen of death with a few errors on it and you're like, well now what? So you can go to your file manager through your cPanel, or you can FTP in, and we're gonna rename the folder of that plugin, and that forces it to not work anymore. And then you can get in and deactivate it, or delete it, or whatever you need to do. So I'm gonna use Cyberduck, because it's a duck, come on, it's amazing. Uh, this is, I just have to say, Talking about Apple and Android, I hate Windows. 
Oh, and I'm stuck with this laptop right now, so I'm sorry. It's no fun. Oh, I opened CyberDuck too many times. Okay, so this is CyberDuck. It's pretty blank. It's not that exciting. I'm going to open a connection. Um, you would have to have an FTP username and password in order to FTP in. You can, you can sometimes give yourself one in your cPanel, or a lot of times wherever you're hosting, they give you that information when you signed up. So it just really depends on where you're hosted. So my server is wordcamp.icebergwebdesign.com. It's just regular FTP, because who needs security? <laughs> And it's going to open a connection. And I'm just going to get a list of my files as soon as the internet catches up with my thoughts. Is anyone afraid to FTP in? No? Good. That's amazing. Be brave. Go in and look at your files. Yeah, that could be too. That could be too. Oh, goodness. Internet. Killing me small. Oh, good point. Yeah, I cannot. All right, well, <laughs> troubleshooting's phase two, file manager. Well, now you know where I'm reselling from. Maybe. Maybe not. All right. Oh, wow, that went fast. All right, well, if you go in here to your file manager, your favorite plugin or favorite folder ever should be WP content. All right, here I am. This is my WordPress install for my WordCamp website. So you're going into WP content, going into plugins. Find your offending plugin. And just rename it. And my favorite trick is just add dash old. Have it save that. And then when I go back into my plugins, it'll be deactivated. So it was just activated before I did that. So that's kind of a cheater way to deactivate it if you can't get in there to hit the word deactivate. Okay, any questions about that? I'm running out of time. Okay. I'll talk faster. All right, so how do you keep your favorite plugins alive? Back up and update on the regular. Um, some problems can be solved by simply updating WordPress and your plugins. And on the other hand, some problems can be created by simply updating WordPress and your plugins. So, but seriously, back up and update. Don't not update just because you're afraid. Back it up and update it. If things go wrong, you can restore. All right, and then what ha we kind of talked about this already. What happens if there's no plugin updates available? It really depends on the plugin. It might still work but chances are it won't, so you might have to find a second solution. Don't be panicked if your plugin author hasn't updated their plugin within a week of WordPress core. You know, give them a couple weeks. A lot of these free plugins in the repository are people that have real day jobs and they're just doing this on the side. So give them a break. They'll catch up as fast as they can. Usually if you send them a message and just say, hey, are you working on an update? They'll let you know one way or the other. Um, what happens if you get stuck in this loop? Is anyone stuck here in the briefly scheduled maintenance? So if you truly are stuck there and it's been longer than a minute and a half, two minutes, you know, and you're, you really think you're stuck, um, if you go into the root folder of your WordPress install via FTP or the file manager, there will be a dot maintenance file. Just delete that. That's, that's not every single time, but that's the majority of that issue. You can just get rid of the dot maintenance. 
It's just a uh, file that is created while you're updating WordPress to just give that white screen that says we're briefly under maintenance. So you aren't going to break WordPress by deleting the dot maintenance file. <laughs> all right, so healing a party member, you can't save them all. And obviously Princess Bride is amazing. Um, so if you update your plugin, your site won't load. We already talked about how you can use your new amazing hacks or skills to get in there and fix it. Or you can, because you're awesome at backing up, you can just restore your site and it'll be fine. So, um, What happens if you update your plugin now and some stuff doesn't work like it used to? This is an actual screenshot of Spotify that's broken. <laughs> My son, who was trying to update his Spotify to the student because he wanted Hulu really bad, Spotify was down for half an hour. Probably not the music streaming, but their actual desktop site looked like this for a solid 30 minutes. I could not get it to load. I tried several different networks and computers, and it was throwing all sorts of errors in the console. So if that happens to you after you update something, again, you can go deactivate it. If you can't get back into it, go into the file manager and deactivate it. Reach out to the plugin author, especially if it's a premium paid plugin, they should offer you help. And if they don't, they probably don't deserve your money. I hate to say that, but. Um, if you can't tell which plugin broke stuff, um, bulk updating is amazing. I like to check all the boxes and pray and hit the button. Just, <laughs> okay, but it doesn't give you any clues about what broke your site. So if you have 10 updates that need to be run, just take the extra minute and a half of your life and update one at a time and go check your page. Make sure it still loads. Make sure it still looks amazing. Because then it makes the troubleshooting faster. Okay? Because you don't have to like figure out which plugin it is. And that's from IT Crowd. If you haven't seen that, that's also an amazing show. Okay. I love questions. <laughs> so, and I like discussions because I do not know everything there is to know about troubleshooting. This is stuff I've learned from other people in the WordPress community, stuff I've learned from word, uh, like from Stack Exchange. How many people have spent time on Stack Exchange? It can be super helpful and it can be super confusing all at the same time. So this is just the steps that I do. These are the things that I've dealt with trying to learn WordPress in the last two and a half years. And so any questions, comments? Yes. So you never said what your favorite page builder was. <laughs> it's and, a, it's and, a, and, or what's your favorite backup plugin? Um, my favorite backup plugin isn't the plugin. Okay. It's our host. Just automatically does the backups once every day. And it's amazing. I can update, I can go down to like the, the file level. Just restore this file. And so it's amazing. So I have used um, like backup buddy in the past and I found that it was super resource intensive and just wasn't useful. So honestly I don't know what a good backup plugin is, but I bet you someone in here does. So and my page builder that I love it just comes bundled with our theme that we use. <gasps> we use a theme. Yes we do. But we customize the Jesus out of it, so no worries. <laughs> um, I'm working on writing our own theme. I'm working on it. But any other questions? Yeah. Um, two plugins I like to uh, get out of trouble with is one's called uh, the Health Check plugin, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that's by the WordPress community or maybe even Automatic. Okay. Um, basically, allows you to safely deactivate plugins on uh, on your live site without actually affecting your live site, oh. so you can find out which plugins causing the issue if you're not sure. And another one's called the uh, WP Rollback. So if you update a version of the plugin, and it's on WordPress.org, uh, you can roll back or roll forward to a previous version. That's actually amazing. That, that would be amazing. The other thing I didn't have time to talk about is WordPress has a built-in debug feature. So if you Google WP underscore debug, you can learn about WordPress has its own kind of little helpful trying to point you in the right direction. Yeah. Good question. Sometimes when you do a search, like you're adding a plugin, uh -huh. and, you do, sure. and, and you're um, adding a plugin, you do an add, you type in a num uh, the name. Mm -hmm. Is there a trick to like getting the correct one? Because I get like five, you know, five pages of plugins that are add-ons to that plugin and whatnot. So is there a trick like putting quotations or something like that that is quicker? 
Well, if you put quotations in, it should do that exact direct search. It should. Right. Oh. Um, the the thing I've learned is the the closer to the real name of the plugin you know, the better. Especially if you know the plugin author, because then you can just search by the plugin author. Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Sometimes if I'm looking up a Gravity Form plugin, there's pages of you know add-ons for Gravity Form. So I, I, I get your frustration. I Google it first and then copy the name of the piece. There you go. That might be helpful. Yeah. Yes. When you're you said don't build on your main website or your local one. So what what do you do to switch back and forth? Um, I think that's a really unique to, to you situation. Um, I do cowboy coding 90% of the time. <laughs> um, if it's something huge, I will put it on a staging site. We host um, some of our sites with a host that allows a staging area. Um, and so I will push it to staging and mess with things. And then I can either push it back to live. Or most times, instead of dealing with all that database headache, I'll just go redo what I did on the live site what I did on staging. Um, the, I've had, I had one issue when I pushed from staging to live, and I'm like, I'm never doing that again. So I probably will someday. But, uh, some people will build the local stack on their computer and build WordPress that way. And there's free tools to do that. And then they will just FTP upload all their stuff. And then you have to move your database, too. And there's some headaches with that, too. Um, I know that I learned about a company called Flywheel. Yes, I see some nods. They have, um, they make that a little bit easier. They also are a host, though. So, like, if you don't want to host with them, they have this tool that you can just put on your computer to use. But you can't, like, one button push anything up unless you're hosting with them. But if you've saved your previous, um, uh, I mean, you have your previous backup, <laughs> why do you need to go to the local? Um, I tend to do that on giant like WooCommerce sites that we have because I don't want to mess with somebody's livelihood. If it's not a blog, I don't want to mess with it. So I will do that in the staging site or on my local computer because you could really break a WooCommerce store very easily. You know, you sneeze in the wrong file and nothing works. So I, I want to do that without affecting their live site. Giant WooCommerce updates will sometimes break old WooCommerce. So I read the notes and pretend I know what I'm reading, and then I will pray and update WooCommerce and go see if everything works. And um, those are the ones I tend to be really careful and do in staging. Um, if it's going to affect somebody's livelihood or their money income, I, I won't cow cowboy code. If I'm changing the color of a background of a box, I'm not going to do that in staging. I'm just going to go do it, and it'll be okay. So. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, use, there's a, there's a server press, which oh, yeah, has server. desktop server. Mm -hmm. It's great for easily building a local environment. Or also, you can look into, if you're on Windows, WAMP, W-A-M-P, or uh, MAMP if you're a Mac user. Mm -hmm. Those will let you set up local server environments that you can Especially install WordPress onto. Right. Yeah, that's Amphitrude with yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. I ran out of time. And